Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. But it's not your job to keep everybody else in the world happy at the expense of disobeying God and losing yourself in the process. It's time for you to live the life that God wants you to live and be the person that God wants you to be. You like my new jewelry? You're going to look at this all night. And you're thinking, what in the world? Well, you know what? I am so fed up with people hearing people say, I'm busy as an excuse <laughs> for not doing the things that they should do, like taking care of themselves, spending time with the people they love, returning phone calls, <laughs> doing things right the first time, spending time with God. Hello, anybody home? I'm busy. Well, I'd love to work out, but I'm busy. Well, you know, I'd love to see you sometime, but I'm busy. Well, you know, I'd love to eat better, but I just, I'm just too busy to fix good stuff. I just got to get the drive through junk all the time. You know, I'm just, I'm too busy to balance my checkbook, so I have no idea what's going on in my life. I'm just, <laughs> I'm too busy. And God has never one time asked us to be busy. He has asked us to be fruitful. And actually, I can say that being busy keeps us very often from being fruitful. So I think we have to ask ourselves what we're busy with and is what we're busy with really what God would have us spending our time on or do we just get caught up in handling whatever screams at us the loudest? Anybody know anything about that? Aren't you just fed up with getting to the end of the day and feeling like so frustrated you'd love to pull your hair out and you know you did something all day but you're not sure what it was but it certainly wasn't what you wanted to do when you got up that morning anybody anybody tired of that okay so look at me while I give you part of the answer <laughs> you are the only one that can fix it it's amazing how people don't like that answer Well, I'm praying for God to do something. No, you are the only one that can fix it. You. <laughs> I can do this all night. You are the only one that can fix it. I was murmuring about my schedule one time. I have all this stuff to do. And I, uh, uh, person go crazy trying to live my life I mean the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said you made your schedule if you don't like it change it come on I want some people to get a hold of something tonight it is not God's will that we're frustrated all the time stressed out murmuring and complaining about all the pressure we have and everything that we're expected to do Whoever said that you have to do everything that everybody expects you to do? Can you find a scripture for that? No. <laughs> Matter of fact, the Bible teaches us that we need to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, be a God pleaser and not a man pleaser. Amen. So this whole weekend, we're going to talk in different ways, come at it from four different ways about having a fruitful life that can be satisfying and fulfilling. One where you can live without regrets, where hopefully we can have more days when we go to bed at night that we don't regret what we spend our time doing. Not that we're ever going to be perfect, but We can grow to the point where we're not letting outside influences control us all the time. We can be people of purpose who know how to stick to our purpose. And we can come to the end of our lives leaving a legacy and not looking back and just regretting that we didn't 
do different things with the time that we had. I want to talk to you about using your time wisely. Can anybody say amen? amen. All right. Now, yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? All right. And I'm wearing this all weekend because <laughs> I'd like you to stop saying this as an excuse for everything that you're not doing that you should be doing. <laughs> Man, I haven't heard from you in a year. What, what's up? Oh, you know, I'm just busy. <laughs> just... You know, haven't seen you at church for the last six months. Where you been? Oh, man, I've just been busy, you know, just got a lot of stress in my life, a lot of things going on. <laughs> haven't seen you at the gym for two months. I thought you were going to work out regularly. Well, you know, just got busy. Got busy doing what? Gaining all the weight back you lost, losing all the, you know. <laughs> Come on, we're going to go for the juggler this weekend and see if we can't get free. <laughs> and honestly, I think this becomes our big excuse. Like, I'm busy. Well, so what? You know? God's never called us to be busy. The question is, is are you bearing good fruit? What is the product of our life? Are we just trying to survive every day? Just make it through the day? Or are we actually living a life that we're proud of, that we feel fulfilled and satisfied, and, get this one, that we are thoroughly enjoying? <laughs> wow. Now, you look at time differently the older you get. And I can, I mean, I can promise you that, you know. We have children under 10 years old in here, and we have people that are a lot more mature. <laughs> we don't use the old word in our house. They're a lot more mature. And I don't know that there's any way to stop somebody in their 20s from thinking they've got all the time in the world, but... The truth is, is none of us know exactly how much time we have. And we need to make every day count. I don't think it's wise to waste any time. Time is an interesting commodity because we all have the same amount. Everybody thinks they don't have enough, but it's obvious we do have enough because we have what God gave us. So when he gave us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, then obviously he's saying this is all the time you need to get everything done that I want you to get done. You'll have time to live a balanced life. You'll work, but you'll rest. You'll play. You'll worship. You'll have time for relationships. All of life can be in balance. There's plenty of time for everything. So let's stop saying, I don't have enough time. If we're gonna say anything, let's say, I'm not using my time wisely. <laughs> now, you know, I, I know that this maybe is kind of like, I thought I was coming to a Christian meeting to hear somebody <laughs> preach. Well, Jesus talks about time all the time. You know, in Ecclesiastes, it talks about there's a time for everything, for every matter under the sun, every matter on earth. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to weep and mourn, a time to laugh. There's literally a time for everything. The only time that I don't see that there's time for is time to waste. That's not on the list. <laughs> it doesn't say, and there's time to waste. You know, I heard myself one day saying, I just feel like I spend so much time doing, and I named something I felt like I spent a lot of time doing, and when I said it, it kind of reverberated back in my ears. Yes, I'm spending my time on that. I'm spending it. Just like we spend our money, we spend our time. And you know, when you spend your money, you don't get the money back. So you hope to spend it on something that was worth you giving up the money. 
And we should look at our time the same way, that we spend our time, and once we spend it, we can't get it back. So we should spend it on something that's going to bear good fruit in our lives. This conference is a case in point. Some of you have taken a great effort to be here. You've driven from other parts of the state or even from other states. You're paying money to stay in a hotel. You took vacation from work. Now, some of you maybe didn't have to do that because you live close, but you spent an evening to come here. Some of you are gonna be here in other meetings. You're spending your time doing this. Now, you're giving up the time, but what are you gonna get? Well, you're gonna get refreshed. Uh, some of you are gonna get saved. <laughs> I mean, some of you spent the time to come here and you're gonna get a whole new life. You're gonna have your sins forgiven, have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Um, some of you are gonna hear from God about something you really need to hear from God. Some are gonna make new friends. Some are gonna experience God's healing touch in your life. Some of you are gonna find some truth out that's gonna make you free. Everybody, I believe, will be encouraged. I'm spending my time doing this. And when I'm done, I'll be tired. Oh, but I will be so satisfied. There's no feeling that's more satisfying to me than to go home from one of these conferences and have a tired body and a satisfied soul. I'll tell you what's miserable, when you have a tired body, a frustrated mind, frustrated emotions, and a dissatisfied soul. Now that's the kind of tired that we wanna give up. You know what? Jesus is made unto us wisdom. We have God's wisdom inside of us. So I ask you, why are so many people so frustrated living lives that are so out of control, wasting so much time under so much stress and so much pressure. You know why? Because we listen to all the voices out there except the voice of God. And I can tell you, if you wanna have peace in your life, you're probably gonna have to make a few people mad to have it. I'll try this side of the room. You're I understand your thinking, but it's the truth. If you wanna have peace in your life, you're gonna to have to tell some people no that wanna hear yes, and they're not gonna like it, and they're not gonna understand it, but it's not your job to keep everybody else in the world happy at the expense of disobeying God and losing yourself in the process. It's time for you to live the life that God wants you to live and be the person that God wants you to be. And people who really love you, if they really love you and they really want relationship with you and they're not just using you, they're gonna be satisfied when you give them the answer, I feel like this is what God is leading me to do. If you have any friend that cannot be satisfied with that answer, then they're a very carnal friend that's probably not listening to God themselves. <laughs> I, I, you know, party sounds like a lot of fun. I, you know, I know you'd like me to go, but I, I just can't go. I just, I just don't feel like it's a wise use of my time this week. I've got a lot of other things on my plate that are a priority for me. You know, really, if you wanna have peace in your life, you're gonna to have to say no to some things that you would rather say yes to just because you'd like to be there. You don't wanna be left out. You wanna be part of it. You wanna be in on things. You wanna know what's going on. I don't know about you, but I used to be very nosy. I wanted to just know what was happening. But I found out that it's more peaceful not to know. gotten into not knowing these days. 
So I don't want you to come just to see what I look like when I'm not on TV or, <laughs> or I don't know, just for some event. I want everybody that's here this weekend to have a mindset that what God is gonna say to me this weekend is important and it's pertinent to my life. And I'm, I'm gonna really listen, maybe take some notes, if not, by the recording of this series so you can hear it again and again, because if this is something you need, if you need a life change in this area, or if those of you watching by television, you need a life change in this area, you're like, man, are you talking to me? Then you, you need to consider getting the recorded message so you can listen to it again and again because you could listen to it 10 times and hear something every time you didn't hear the last time. And the only way that we really get anything is through meditation. And meditation means to go over it and over it and over it and over it until it really becomes not just information, but revelation. I can... <laughs> See, we don't... We're educated way beyond our level of, of obedience. I mean, how many, how many times, for example, do we need to hear, forgive people who have hurt you? I mean, really, you don't really need another message on that. I mean, I could preach one and you'd all benefit, but you don't really need one because you know the message, you've heard it. But it's not gonna help us until we do it. And we don't do it until it becomes revelation and not just information. And if you wanna know the truth, I think sometimes today we have too much available to us. You can hear me tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, Saturday morning. You can get me on television every day next week. You can listen to three other preachers on your way home. You can go to church on Sunday morning, hear somebody else, turn your radio on, hear somebody else. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. We are so blessed to have so much word available to us. But in the process, we need to stick with something long enough to say that's a revelation. I studied the love of God for me as a person for one solid year. And I wanna tell you what, that's a revelation in my life that the devil can never take away from me. And it, has, it helps me every day of my life. It helps me not to be condemned when I sin. It helps me not to waste my time on guilt. It helps me to have confidence. It helps me when I have unexpected storms in my life and I have trials and tribulations that I don't understand. I don't have to understand everything because I know that he loves me. And so I'm just giving you that as an example that we have so much up here. But the only way it's gonna get down here is if we spend more time on one thing at a time. It doesn't matter if you've got your whole Bible underlined in pink, pink, blue, red, and yellow. That doesn't mean that we know it because we've colored in it. <laughs> you know, before I became a Holy Ghost-filled Christian, I, w I never wrote in my Bible. I, you know, it was too holy to write in, I guess. I don't know, I didn't do that. <laughs> and, you know, when, when I got in some of the Word and Faith, more charismatic churches, everybody wrote in their Bible, and I thought that was a cool thing. You know, it's just like we'd, we'd sit and color everything in, you know. The more stuff you had colored in, the more colors, and then you could write notes and put stars and check marks. And, you know, you got to the point where when you opened it up, you were kind of like hoping the person next to you saw Or when the pastor said, open up to a certain section, you open it up and you had, oh, wow. I, I know this one. You know, we never know anything until we admit how much we don't know, how pathetically little we know. And I think that we need to stick with this until we eliminate the unreasonable stress from our lives because Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, overburdened, 
and he might as well have said stressed out, and I will give you rest. And he said, my burden is light and easy to be born. We should not go around dragging ourselves through every day just trying to survive life, throwing a little time or whatever screams at us the loudest. So many people do not enjoy their life. And I know because I was one of them. I tell you, I've walked this road and I was busy. And that was my excuse for everything. Well, I'm just so busy. <laughs> I'm just so busy. I'm too busy. Nobody should be this busy. But is anybody beginning to catch up with me that if we're that busy, it's not busy's fault, whoever busy is, you know? <laughs> I, it, it's not even the devil's fault. Because we do have power and authority over him. If he runs our lives, it's because we let him. You know, it's very interesting to me as a teacher to watch how people respond when you try to get them to take responsibility. It's like if I say, man, that's the devil. <laughs> oh boy, everybody gets excited if it's the devil. <laughs> Let's trust God and he'll give us a miracle. We're going to give away free resources at the end of the meeting. Ah! I mean, Christians get violent when you give away free stuff. I mean, just downright violent. We almost had to quit giving away stuff because people would get so violent. But if you say now, this is a problem and it's your responsibility to fix it. We live in a whole society today that doesn't want to take responsibility for anything. And it's causing a great deal of the moral decline that we live in. We have to be willing to take responsibility. So, I'm all for learning how to use time wisely. I can use this message, so if you don't want it, I'll just preach to myself tonight. And uh, God wants us to bear good fruit good fruit. He wants us to have something that's lasting, something that remains. Every one of you, when your time here is up, you can leave a legacy. And it's really your obligation to do so, because there is another generation coming up that's going to need a deposit from you if they're going to live their lives properly. Amen. Well, I want to encourage all of us, including myself, to look closely at how we're using our time. And let's ask God how He wants us to spend it, because, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. We want to make sure we don't waste it, but that we invest it wisely. person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted and then they look at you, get make eye contact and you smile and they read that smile and then they start smiling and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. <laughs> so what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today.
Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse verfrissing? Frisse Impulsen levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan. Zelfbewust te zijn heeft alles te maken met vertrouwen op God. Dit is precies waar het over gaat in het dagboek van Joyce. Je bent wonderlijk gemaakt. Vertrouw op God en weet dat je waardevol bent voor Hem. Hij geeft je de kracht om nieuwe dingen te doen en hiervoor je gaven in te zetten. God heeft je wonderlijk gemaakt om moedig en vrij jezelf te zijn. Met dit dagboek voor vrouwen ontdek je elke dag iets meer hoe kostbaar je bent voor God. Bestel je bent wonderlijk gemaakt door te bellen met 026 2022 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash wonderlijk.